I mean, she was Katie Walsh, but to me, she was Kay Walsh, jockey. Uh, you know, when I wanted uh, a super sub down for our third or fourth horse in big, those big handicaps, you rang up uh, Ruby and say, would Katie ride this for me? But I never um, looked at her as a lady jockey. To me, she was a jockey that could take over on any of our lighter weight horses. And she was, you know, she was winners in Ireland, England and France for me. County Hurdle in Cheltenham, fantastic. And then the Prix La Barca in Paris, you know, the day that we'll all remember. And uh, then last year comes out and wins on relegate. I mean, she was tailed off, I think. I stopped, I took my binoculars down and started looking for the other horses halfway around the back. I said, that's that. And next thing up, she pops. So, um, you know, she knew what she was doing. She put it all into one run. And uh, that's why she is what she is. A lot of horses jumped very, very well for her. She had a great knack of getting horses to jump. Um, that's why even Willie, it's him using him in the prof or in the professional races on the real good horses. In proper days, when he could have anyone in England or Ireland, he'd still have Katie. Like, and when we um, had ones that mattered up and down, even if they were again professionals, if they fit her bracket, I, I tried to get her to ride as many as she could have done. It was great she was able to ride your busy, um, but sure she gave him an incredible ride. Yeah, um, very determined and very brave. Yeah, sure. It's the same as if her life depended on it from the second last to the line. Final fence in the Guinness Kerry National. Past the hat and you're busy. Who's battling back on the inside? Champell is trying to put in a last effort. You're busy on the inside. And Katie Walsh, you're busy, will win the Guinness Kerry National for Katie Walsh. And she could have rode better horses. I know she could have up and down. So there was a great bit of loyalty there as well. And it was great to repay it today at the Kerry National. Yeah. But I think she had confidence in her own ability, she had confidence in the horses she rode and she rode every horse as an individual, she just didn't have one way of riding. She assessed the races, assessed the horses and put it all together and more often than not she was very successful. The first time I sort of remember Nina riding was when she arrived down with Paul one morning, I think she was about eight or nine and she rode out a little horse called El Travatore and he was a free horse and I remember he ran up over seven furlongs on the grass and I thought oh my god he's running away with her and when of course she pulled him up as Nina would at the top and she had a big big smile on her face and she said to me oh she said he can fly and I think I kind of fell in love with her from there on <laughs> and she's been she's really I suppose been a bit like a daughter to me ever since. Oh she's an extremely hard worker and again like to be living in the same house as Tommy Carberry, Paul Carberry, Philip um, you know, she she was bound to be to be good, but she was so so competitive. Like I mean, she she just wanted to win, and that was that was her main drive. And she was so good at presenting horses at fences. You know, I haven't seen anyone as good as her. So she had all those put together, and you know, she just had she had no equal over the banks anyway. Yeah, she was a great judge of work. She was a great judge at home when she'd ride a horse work. Uh, let it be even a flat horse or a jumping horse. She was, she was a great jump, uh, judge of those young bumper horses or whatever, when they were ready and when they weren't ready. And, and there's no question, she's a, she's a big loss in that respect. And I think when she went down to ride for Aidan, for, uh, he only had her a month and he realised what she was and he wasn't long before he snapped her up. On the fringe used to be JT McNamara's ride, you know, and when, when John got injured, Nina took over and he helped her and, you know, put her right about the horse and stuff and um, she she got a great tune out of him, you know. She won countless of races, both Cheltenham, Aintree, Punchestown, Leperstown, she won all those big hunter chases on him and, and he really, really ran for her, you know, and, and travelled well during his races and, um, yeah, I think he's kind of close to our heart, all right. We all miss her in the yard. We will, I miss her all the time anyway, although she's in contact with me quite a lot, but, but uh, um, she's, she's just a great person. I think Irish racing um, was very lucky in the last 10 to 15 years to have these two girls riding there, because they could hold their own with any professional male, and, um, and they, they proved that. So, um, and it was fitting that both of them retired at the same time, and they're after leading a fair old vibe there now, but I think Nina and Katie really set the standard. The fact that the two of them were sister-in-laws and whatever, sort of, I suppose they're kind of joined at the hip from there on, and one sort of did what the other done, and, and like they, they, like riding winners of Cheltenham, riding winners of big festivals, you know, the two of them were, were pioneers, but there were other good ladies before them, but they did bring it to a new level. Two of them were great role models um, for lady riders, but they were, they were great role models anyhow as riders, so 
uh, you know, we, we wish them best both in, in the, and congratulations on the award today.